Welcome back. I'm Evangela Charlotte Lumpkins, and this is Shout It Out to the Rooftops Ministry. I appreciate you joining me. I know this is going to be a difficult topic and challenging you, but I hope it changes your life. Remember, we are talking about the Kingdom in Christ and the Coming Kingdom series. That's right, the Freedom in Christ and the Coming Kingdom series. And today we're ministering about Christ, church leadership, and the judgment that's coming. Oh boy, I got scriptures. I'm going to take my time. We're going to be working from the Old Testament and the New Testament today. I'm going to put it all together. We're going to talk about the Old Testament leaders and what happened. And then we're going to talk about what the Lord says in the New Testament. Stay with me. Why don't we open in prayer as we invite the Holy Spirit through this study. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, God, help us understand what our relationship is to you and what that means that you leave disciples to obey you, God. Father, I pray for my listeners that they will hear this word and obey you, that they will repent of the way they've been treating people and do better next time. God, I pray that you meet every need of every listener and be with us now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Repent. If you haven't been treating people like they are brothers and sisters of Jesus, that's not good. If you haven't been giving them the water that they need, the spiritual water, you haven't been giving them the spiritual food and food, if you haven't visited them in prison or comforted them in their troubles, then guess what? There's no reward in that life. So this Bible study is about bringing you back to center. If you got off center as leadership or a disciple, this study is going to help you get back on center, get back on track of following Christ in the name of Jesus. Okay, we left off at Matthew 10, 38. Our next verse is John, St. John, chapter 12, verse 26. Chapter 12, verse 26. And I'm going to read it slow for my listeners. Take it easy. We're not going to rush this. We're going to just trust that God will help you understand what thus saith the Lord today. Chapter 12, verse 26. The Bible says, anyone who wants to be a disciple must follow me. That's established it. Because my servants must be where I am. And the Father will honor anyone who serves me. That's a great scripture. If you're with the Lord and you're a disciple, you're going to follow him and do what he says. He says, because my servant must be where I am. You got to be on the same page with Jesus. If Jesus says, and we began with that scripture that says, I was hungry and you didn't feed me. I was thirsty and you didn't give me drink. I was naked and you didn't close me. You got to be where he is. That's my family, he said. You're with my children. You're with my people. And if you didn't do it to them, you didn't do it to me. So he says, my disciples are coming from where I'm coming from, okay? He says, my disciples are on the same page. They're in agreement with me. They're in agreement with God. So if you're in agreement with Jesus because you're a disciple, then you should be on the same page with him. And after this study, if you're not, if you're not then repent and come back and get on that same page. Get on the track that you will have your reward when he comes. You want to be rewarded for all that hard work that you did? Well, stay with Christ, and he will take you with him, like he promised. Okay, the next one, 1 Peter 2, chapter 2, verse 21. 1 Peter 2, chapter 2, verse 21. Here we go. 1 Peter 2. That is the New Testament more toward the back. Okay, First Peter 2, he says, For God called you to do good. Is that plain enough English? Even if it means suffering, just as Christ suffered for you, he is your example and you must follow him in his steps. Okay, beloved, we're going to go slow. You just heard that Jesus is your boss, he's the leader, if you're with him, you're going to be on the same page with him. If you're born again, if you confess Christ, if you're baptized with him, if you have the Holy Spirit, you're a disciple, okay? You can't be mingling, mixing, dapping in, hanging around the world and those things because you're not following him anymore. This is what he says. Let's go on. The Bible says, he is your example, our example, 
and we, you and me, must follow him in his steps. The Bible says, he never sinned nor ever deceived anyone. He did not retaliate when he was insulted, nor threatened revenge when he suffered. He left his case in the hands of God who always judged fairly. He personally carried our sins in his body on the cross so that we can be dead to sin and live for what is right. By his wounds, you are healed. We are healed. Once you were like sheep who wandered away, but now you have turned to your shepherd, the guardian of your souls. Beloved, did you get that? Do you understand that? Do you understand what Christ has done for you? That isn't no, you know, no, um, no certificate of, of accomplishments. No, 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 no. He put his life on the line for you and I to be saved. And as his disciples, as he's our leader, as he is the boss, as he is the son of God, as he is the redeemed one, and he has redeemed us from our sins, he ransomed his life for us. We can't just treat him any old way. We cannot, and in the end, expect a big room in the mansion. He says, no, what you've done unto the least of these, my brethren, you've done unto him. If you ain't treating them right, you ain't treating him right. If you're not taking care of the body of Christ, you're not taking care of him. You might be yakking, 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 talking, 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 but if you ain't walking that talk, he said, I don't know you. I never knew you. He says, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I don't know you. So you can't just be dropping Jesus' name because you're looking good and you're popular. No, nope, you have to be doing the work, following him. Be on the same page as Christ. Okay, it's going to be good. It's a challenge, I promise you, but we're not going to give up. There's more scriptures. Jesus told his disciples, do what he does. And he washed their feet. John chapter 13, verse 12 to 15. John chapter, th chapter 3 of John 13. He washed the disciples' feet. And guess what he told them? Do what I do. He says, chapter, uh, John chapter 13, 12 to 15. We're going to go slow. I'm not going to rush this study for you. He says, Anyone who wants to be my disciple must follow me because my servants must be where I am and the Father will honor anyone who serves me. Amen. And then he says in, 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 in um, John chapter 13, after washing their feet, he put on his robe again and sat down and asked, do you understand what I am doing? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, because that's what I am. And since I, your Lord and teacher, must wash your feet, you ought to wash each other's feet. You know what that means. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Take off them shoes, take off them sweaty socks, take off that, you know, that pride, or take off that, I don't do that. These people, psh, nobody watches my feet. Nobody does this for me. Take that off. He says, I have given you an example to follow. And more than just foot washing, Jesus gave us as an example. He gave us so many examples of himself, not just foot washing. He says, do as I have done to you. Isn't that something? Beloved, that is a whole series of, of videos right there. Do as I have done to you. Is Christ forgiven you? Forgive others. If Christ has, has met your need, meet others' needs. If Christ has visited you and comforted you, meet others' needs and comfort them. If Christ has got you through a night and you've been ministered by the Holy Spirit, minister to other people. You understand? If he's done it for you, beloved, do it for others. If you know you messed up so bad and he forgave you and you're crying and crying and then his spirit says, peace be with you. Somebody offended you and hurt your feelings and they're crying and crying, forgive me. You got to say, I forgive you because Christ has forgiven you. Okay, let's go on. Jesus is the Lord and he brings a reward with him. Colossians 3, 23 and 24. Colossians chapter 3, 
23 to verse 24. He says, remember, the Lord will give you an inheritance as your reward. We talked about that. And that the master you are serving is Christ. But if you do what is wrong, you will be paid back for the wrong you have done. For God has no favorites. Oh, beloved, we got to take a few minutes from there. Remember we mentioned in the beginning, we opened with that scripture. Those who did his will, they got blessed. They got to sit in his kingdom with him. Those that tried to just drop names and looking cool and walked around and or established themselves in some incorporation as a leader, but those leaders did not take care of the people, the brothers and sisters of Christ. They were not actually on the same page. They got ousted and they got eternal punishment. The Bible says it again. But if you do what is wrong, which is the opposite of good, you will be paid back for the wrong you have done. For God has no favorites. And that's the New Testament we're talking about. We know the Old Testament. They got slammed, bammed, and everything. But even with salvation on the table, even with the Word of God, you teach or you share every week. If you're not obeying God, you're not in the line to get your blessing. And that's what we began with. If you're not obeying God, if you're not following Christ, and if you're not teaching others to obey God, you're with the goats, and you don't have a reward. Oh, my goodness. Oh, there's so much to understand about this scriptures today, about the church and God's word and the people who are obeying God that are going to be blessed. You hold on. And those that are not, I pray that you get back on track. This does not have to be your end. Let's read the next one. The next one says, not all who call Lord, Lord will enter in. Isaiah 40, 10. Isaiah 40, 10 is the Old Testament. If you do not have the Old Testament Bible, I have it here and I'm going to read it to you. He says, here we go. Isaiah 40, 10. God is calling those who know him. God is calling back to his kingdom those who obeyed him. But not everybody that cries, Lord, Lord, will enter in. Because why? We just said they didn't do what he asked them to do. And they were name dropping. So let's see what the Old Testament talks about loving the Lord and obeying him. The Bible says, Behold, the Lord God will come with might, with his arm ruling for him. Behold, his reward is with him and his recompense before him. And recompense means compensation, repay, or restitution. Are you waiting for a reward from God? Are you waiting for a payment from God? Are you waiting for your blessing from God? Then I hope you are because church leadership, according to Matthew 7, 21, says, Hey, he's the good shepherd. He's the one that's going to reward Matthew 7, 21. Let's see what that says. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. Okay, Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. He says, Not everyone who calls out to the Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. This is the truth. Only those who actually do the will of my Father in heaven will enter in. Do I have to read that again? Yes. Not everyone who calls to the Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only those who actually do the will of my Father in heaven will enter. Did I make that clear? He says, on judgment day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, we prophesied we in your name. We cast out demons in your name and performed many miracles in your name. That's leadership. That's not just people sitting in the audience. That's not just people cleaning in the bathroom. That's not just people cooking church meals. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. He's talking to leadership. And they said... But I will reply, God says, I never knew you. Get away from me. You broke God's law. And you know what God's law was? Love. Love one another. Anyone who listens to my teaching and following it is wise. Like a person who builds a house on a solid rock, 
Though the rain comes in torrents and the flood waters rise and the winds beat on the house, he says, it won't collapse because it is built on the bedrock. But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish. Like a person who builds a house on sand, when the rains and floods come and the wind beats against the house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. That is common sense. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowd were amazed at his teaching, for he taught with real authority. Again, beloved, he's your boss. He has authority. He's on the throne. God ordained him. God put him on that throne. He belongs to us as a teacher and a messiah. And there's no one going to make it more plainer for you than his word. Okay, beloved, this is what we're going to do. We're going to think about this. We're not going to try to change it. We're not going to try to uh, 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 make it easier because you've had it easier up until this time. It's time for you to come and get back on track. These are the hard facts. This is the truth. You might have drifted away. You might have heard agreement from your board or your corporation or your family ties. They might have said, don't have nothing to do with those poor people. They might have said, you can't even visit people anymore in prison because you might catch something. Oh, no. No, 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 no. You're going to take the risk. You're going to suffer for the cause of Christ, and you're going to obey him. And that's what we're talking about in this video. Christ his church, and his leaders. We're talking to the leadership today. God wants you to get your reward. He's bringing it with him. He's established who, he, who your boss is. That's Christ. Don't play. Your boss is not the board of directors. Your boss is nobody who, who pays your bills or writes your checks. Your boss is Jesus Christ. Beloved, come on back. We have more scriptures to talk about. Church and the leadership. I'm Evangelist Charlotte Lankins. This is Shout It Out to the Rooftops Ministry, and we're doing the Kingdom of Heaven series. I hope you come on back, because there's more what thus saith the Lord. Bye now. Welcome back.